When we thought about our next generation low power device family, we really had to look at our customer base, like you who are joining this webinar to see what applications are really looking to extend the battery life of applications. We need to make what we have learned on our SCM32L0 family, but establish three new pillars for the next generation of our U0. Low power, updated IP and security, and cost effectiveness. These three pillars, along with customer feedback, really drove this design and birth of the SM30U0 product family. Overall, we had four main target markets that our SM32U0 were designed in mind for with heavy constraints on energy consumption. Industrial markets targeted standalone sensors, alarms, and door locks. Medical applications looking at insulin and glucose meters and smart meters. Lastly, in our consumer market, we see plenty of applications such as trackers, headphones, and many more that can benefit with a longer battery life with the SM30U0 with updated IPs and security features. From ST's perspective, the market is extremely wide in both the consumer and industrial space. While we see specific use cases for the SM32U0 like the ones stated above, this is still a general purpose MCU that has far reach in terms of our applications. It's up to the customer like you to see where the SM32U0 ultimately fits. As mentioned before, ST has been in the lead of low power push for our MCUs and we are continuing to invest heavily in technology and resources to continue to innovate. All these investments are beginning to pay off. We see all this business growing, the curve speaks by itself. We are very proud to say that we have already shipped more than 2 billion of units, but we know that we have to keep moving on the innovation in order to offer better products with lower power consumption. Here is a top level view of our SM32 product family in its totality. Our family is divided into five different product segments. Starting from the bottom, we have our wireless SOCs, which include Cortex M4 class products with either a sub gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz radio as part of a monolithic design. The next is our ultra low power where the SM32U0 is being positioned. Low power for front along with autonomous rules is where customers see this family being a big value for their application. The mainstream is where we have a mixed bag of applications. I would like to highlight our SM32C0, which is our most cost-effective SM32, really targeted for legacy 8-bit markets that have been around for the last few decades. In addition, I would like to mention our G4, as the device has a very rich analog front-end, targeting applications like motor control and digital power supply conversion. Next is our high performance, where you see a lot of DMIPS and big memory for high-end applications with peripherals such as displays and Ethernet as part of its offering. Finally, our MPU, which provides power efficient Cortex A class processors with the ecosystem of offering of Linux. As a final point, I would like to highlight the 10 year longevity stamp. This is ST's flagship MCU MPU product family, and we have a rolling 10 year commitment, so there should be no concerns for your teams about a design apart in now and worry if ST will end up life at later. In this graph, we are showing where the SCM30U0 fits into the memory DMIPS in comparison of other low power family. In addition, this gives a really good chart to see when it comes to low power. SCMicro has a full offering in regards to memory densities to fit any applications. To a small TSSOP 20 AK device to a large 4 meg BGA, I'm confident we will have a memory segment that would suit your application needs. For the SCM30U0, we'll be highlighting three main features that I believe our embedded developers would be interested in. Ultra low power, updated IP features, device security, and cost-effective solution. Let's start with the ultra-low power consumption. In this chart, this outlines the multiple power modes, both active and low power, of the SM3U0 is able to achieve. I would highlight the top with the SM3U0 in full active mode, supporting up to 56 megahertz. In addition, I'm gonna highlight stop two, which is ST's nomenclature for core shutoff, but full SRAM retain. Even with stop two with RTC, we are still achieving an amazing sub microamp level with an extremely fast wake up time of six microseconds to ensure your application is able to start up quickly based off external trigger like from an external sensor. Finally, I want to highlight the VBAP mode that allows for RTC to continue to tick away with a power number of an astonishing six nanoamps. 
In the table below, we see a comparison of SM2 product in respect to our SM3 U0. I have compared each device, such as our SM8 and SM3 L0, with the various power modes to see how it stacks up against one another. With the lower process node on the SM30 user at 90 nanometer, we are able to surpass the run mode core mark values by a significant margin. Here is the explanation of the low power modes along with the wake up sources via RTC. The RTC peripheral is active in all low power modes and the RTC interrupts cause device to exit the low power profile. In stop 0, stop 1, stop 2 and standby modes, only the LSC or LSI clocks can be used to clock the RTC. Only the LSC is functional in shutdown mode because the offset begins to the VBAT domain. The RTC peripheral features an ultra low power counter with alarms which will run in all low power modes. Additionally, when it's clocked by the low speed oscillator at 32.768 kHz, the RTC is functional even when the main supply is off and when the VBAT domain is supplied by a backup battery. The RTC consumes only 130 nanoamps at 1.8 volts, including the LSE power consumption. The hardware counter is provided in a binary coded decimal format to reduce software load, particularly when the date and time must be displayed. Tamper detection and backup registers belong to the tamper peripheral block. Here's a RTC block diagram. The RTC has two clock sources. The RTC clock is used for the RTC timer counter and the ABB clock is used for the RTC register read and write access. The RTC clock can either the high speed oscillator divided by 32, the low speed external oscillator, or the low speed internal oscillator, LSI. To be functional in stop or standby mode, the RTC clock must be used the LSE or LSI. To be functional shutdown or VBAT, the RTC must use LSE. The RTC clock is first divided by a 7-bit programmer asynchronous prescaler who provides the CKAPR clock. Most of the RTC's clock at the CPRA frequency. So in order to reduce power consumption, it is recommended to set a high asynchronous division value. In this portion, we will discuss the updated features and device security that are present on the SM3U0. The IP blocks that are present on the SM3U0 have been utilized on predecessors on our previous SM3U device. For example, please consider the updated analog block from our very popular L4 and G0 family, including op-amps, ADC, DAC, with security blocks from our SM3U5, like high protection register and the random number generator. I would like to start off with our SM3U0, which supports up to 60K flash and up to 12K SRAM. As mentioned earlier, the SM3U0 is a Cortex M0 Plus that is able to support a maximum operating frequency at 56 MHz. In terms of connectivity, we have a multiple SPI I2C user art ports on with an added T random number generator block. Standard analog features in regards to the single 12-bit ADC supporting multiple channels with support of a comparator, op-amp, and onboard temperature sensor. I want to highlight the added security features with the included RDP regression and high protection memory that is present on the SMU. As a final note, this device has a wide range of timers that can support multiple features like PWM, compare capture, and can also be cascaded. For this SM3 user variant, we are supporting a higher density device with 250K flash and 40K SRAM. For simplicity, the items in pink are the additions from the 6K version of the SM3 user mentioned in the previous slide. I do want to highlight USB port is available on this variant and can operate without an external crystal. In addition, the SMDU0 250K version will support AES. If you want to take advantage of our crypto library acceleration. Final point, pin compatibility between the SMDU0 and other low power families like our L0, L1, L4s will be supported. Security overall is a big focus for our SM32 and we wanted to ensure that our upcoming environments are, are supported. The chart here shows the target certification of our devices based on two security standards, CSIP and PSA. In the future, we'll be adding security as a service like secure programming as part of the SCM32 formal product offer. For the SCM32U0, we have updated security features that allow the SCM32U0 to obtain CSIP level 3 and PSA level 1. Features such as RDP regression, secure boot, secure firm update is supported on the SCM32U0. For certification, our true random number generator is fully certified with the NIST SP800 standard. In regards to the ecosystem, our secure firm update solution is available to be used with the reference co-design with support of our companion chip, the ST-SAFE. Here, we highlight the ST-SAFE A120, which is fully CCEAL5 Plus and compliant to the FIPS 140 standard. 
The secure element has a rich and expansive feature set that allows, but not limited to, secure connection, data hashing, and signal verification. The device itself comes equipped with a 16K EEPROM with over 30 year of data retention with an extended temperature range. Key applications that we see the SD Safe A120 being added security value would be any connected object, healthcare, and wireless charging. Lastly, the SD Safe is fully supported within the latest Q version of SCM32 CubeMX. Overall, the ST Safe can prevent multiple of attacks. From invasive physical attacks, which involve delayering or decapping, microprobing, to side channel attacks, and to fault detections such as external glitches through voltages. The SCCA was able to prevent these to give your application protection from these suspect attacks. For those who are familiar with our nuclear development system, we offer a nuclear shield board that supports our ST Safe products. We also have extensive soft support, including XQ packages and SM32 cube support packages, containing example projects and API drivers for easy integration into your embedded application. We also have SSL stack based on OpenSSL that targets Linux-based operating systems. The right protection feature protects code and non-volatile data from unwanted or accidental erasure. This protection is only available on the main flash memory. The right protection can be set on a selection of flash memory sectors. When a sector is protected, it cannot be erased or programmed. Any attempt to write access to this sector will cause a flash memory error. If at least one sector is write protected, a mass erasure of the flash memory cannot be performed. This protection needs to be removed first. The purpose of the secure memory is to store code and data available during the boot time that become inaccessible once the boot program sets a control bit. The typical use case consisting in performing an authentication and possibly decryption of a software image present in the flash memory by using cryptographic keys contained in securable memory. The authentication and decryption programs are also stored in securable memory. Option bits are used to set the size of securable memory in page units. Base address is always 8 million hex, which corresponds to the Cortex M0 plus reset vectors. When the HDP enable field in the option bytes is equal to zero, security memory is disabled. This field can only be modified in RDP level zero. When software sets the HTTP1 enable in the flash SCCR register, the secure memory is configured. Configuration is active after the OB launch procedure. In case of secure boot used to perform image authentication and decryption, the HTTP byte in the flash HTTP register is modified when the authentication is successful, just before branching to the first instruction of the image. The only way to open the secure area is to apply a reset. Now, I want to provide a little time in regards to the cost-effective solution that the SM32U0 can provide. Overall, there is a lot of integration on the SM32U0. Firstly, there is no need for external high-frequency crystal. The HSI has an accuracy of plus or one single percent. The LCD segment display is optimized for a lot of energy savings with a low power output buffer to drive high load LCD panels. Many of the analog peripherals on the device no need, do not need any type of external components. We do have a touchscreen controller IP, which is able to wake up on stop mode in terms of optimizing energy savings. We have a wide variety of packages from TSSP20 to variants in QFN and QFE packages, along with a very small WLCSP. There will be six memory size configurations with crypto AES being an option as well. In this table, this outlines the entire SMU0 family in regards to the memory density configuration, the Y axis, and the package type, the x-axis. A common theme that still applies here is the pin compatibility between the family and a customer like yourself is able to start on a 16K QFN32 package with our sm 3 u 31 and easily scale up to the 2 k AES version, the sm 3 u 83 kc without any issue. This greatly reduces the learning curve of a new device which a customer can reuse previous collateral such as PC boards to get to the market quicker with their application. Here is a nuclear board lineup for the SM3 U0. We are offering the U031R86, which is the 64K version, and the SM3 U083RCT6, which has the 256K flash memory with AES. Both boards support the Arduino Uno header for possible device expansion, along with our support for a single USB, for powering the board and supporting SWD. Along with the header pins, push buttons, and LEDs, this is a very simple board for development 
and can be, te be a test vehicle for power measurements due to its simplicity. In addition to our nuclear boards, we're offering an SM2U0 discovery kit variant that has a few more features. This board still embeds an ST-Link V2 that can provide programming interfaces and power via USB. Various headers and connectors with the USB-C for USB device support as well. This board also embeds an ST temperature sensor, the STS22, and a touch key for designs that are looking for non-mechanical buttons reference design. As with all of our SM2 devices, the SM32U0 will be supported 100% by our SM32 ecosystem. From the SM32 CubeMX code generator tool and SM32 Cube ID for code development, all material for the SMU0 such as HAL, low-level firmware libraries are fully deployed for customers to get up and start it quickly. In addition, the SC team has continued to work with partners and third-party companies to fully offer a system solution for our customer base. Thank you for your time.